Okay, welcome back to <laughs> this is episode. Who, when have we ever started with okay? The first word what? can't be okay. <laughs> okay. Jeez. We might have all to right. leave all this, Tom. Tom, you might have to leave all this. Oh, I don't know. This is comedy gold. All right, ready? Start again. Welcome to The Compound. This is episode 162. Um, this is not Ian Happ. Surprise. This is <laughs> guest host Scott Efros uh, joining my friends Mr. Zach Short and Mr. Dakota Mekas and Tom Prizman on the ones and twos. How are we doing tonight, fellas? Presented by, who are we presented by? Oh, presented by uh, Parse Rum. Um, when I say parse, you say rum. 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 See, yeah, I listen to the show. Um, I could actually use a shipment of parse rum down here in Tampa. If uh, anybody you know would like to send me some, that'd be really we nice. Any hookups? We could, we could probably you figure can out. Go to, uh, you, can, you can go to Benny's in Chicago and and grab some. Well, too Ooh. bad. Well, you were just in Chicago, Zach. That would have been really nice to you know for you to pick up a bottle for me. I didn't know that you were low. I would have. I would have grabbed a bunch. I would love yeah. to save save the planet and plant some. Pay for them, don't grab them. That be you know stealing. Well, grab them to pay for them type of thing. Okay, All right. Scott, yeah, sure. Scott, get us back on track. You need to be our Ian. Ian's the one that doesn't let well, us get off the rails. So here's the thing. You know, Ian asked me to guest host uh, since he's on the West Coast. So the first thing I'd like to do is I would like to put Tom in charge of an Ian tracker for the because he's playing the Angels right now. I think he's had two at bats so far. Up so whenever off. he. Comes up to yes. I uh, watched the first couple innings. Got up to a hot start. Yeah, yes. four nothing. I think. Nice. The boss, um, the boss is zero for one with a walk. Mike talks in a yeah, two RBI yeah. single, and yes. Matt Mervis as well with a couple. That's of Tom's best guys. friend. Tom so, would trade. Tom would trade Aaron Judge for Mike Talkman. I think. No, no, I, not, uh, not it's Aaron close Judge. though. You'd consider it. <laughs> no, I would not for Aaron Judge. No, for other. Would people, you trade yeah. Scott F. Ross for Mike Talkman? No, <laughs> those are the two. You found the two untouchables on the Yankees for me. Everyone else. I'm all what about Kiner Falefa? <laughs> Wouldn't listen. I'll drive Kiner Falefa to the airport myself. Jesus. I will rent. A, I will rent a car. I don't even own no. a car. I will rent a car and drive him to the court. You know Mike Talkman? Like, have you like interacted with him, or you just like the like his style of play when he's with the Yankees? Uh, I just like to Do you have any personal connection. I was working there in 19, so I, I saw him a couple times, but it like wasn't like I was interacting with the players very often. So, no, I can't say I know him. Some of the John Boy guys know him. He's been on a couple jo- – uh, he was on Talking Yanks one time, so they know him, but I've actually never met him. I was going to say, watching the beginning of the game, he did uh, get an RBI knock, and I don't know why, but he just looks like a good clubhouse guy. I don't yeah. – I have no information, but just, to, you know. I mean, you could exactly. ask if you're played with a lot of his former teammates. I was, you would have more access to information than we would. So, different Where do you from start? an episode. Yeah, well, I wrote down a bunch of different things. Uh, I've been sitting here all day. I feel like uh, Chris Farley in that sketch um, where he's been sitting in the basement all day, the motivational speaker. <laughs> you texted us so many times, like, hey, like, whenever you guys are ready. And you're like, what, what time are we thinking? Like 10, 10, 15, 10, 30? <laughs> wanted to say that i feel like you know uh late night shows when they have a guest host sometimes like i feel like tom might be the only person that actually knows that like jimmy kimmel has guest hosts i do like, know all the time that. yes um i feel like that right now so it's quite an honor i have a bunch of different topics i think we do a rapid fire topic talk show and just go straight off the top of the head let's start with dakota's let's start with dakota's topics why, i have something why i need to go bring ahead? up Something that I need Please. to bring up that the boss uh, asked me to bring up. Okay. Um, this was, let's see. I texted Tom. Um, when was this? this? I think it was Friday. I texted Tom and asked him if uh, we had any more athletic greens out there because I, I wanted some mm. more AG1. Uh, you know, I know John Boy usually supplies them for us sometimes if they have them in stock. Texted Tom, didn't get a response. A couple hours later, Ian responded and said, Tom, get the guy his greens. Still no response from Tom. I texted again, and I said, Tom hates me. Um, still no response. I then get a notification on Twitter that Tom Prizman has liked a tweet that I was quoted in. And I said, well, 
So the guy's on his phone. He's seeing the texts. He's choosing <clears throat> to ignore me. And I took that that hurt a little bit. First and off, this is a lot of misinformation. It was this Saturday. is facts. This is no. It was, you said it was Friday. It was Saturday. It was my okay. day off. I'm not okay. Fr- that is fair. <sighs> that is fair. It was Saturday. I will give you. I will grant you that. But it was and over like five hours where I was like, you could just tell me to fuck off, and I'll like go with like that's fine. But I had got enough. I was getting ghosted. It was like I was trying to like talk to the hot girl at school and be like, like let me take you out to dinner, and you just wouldn't respond, and I was sad. I told you I was texting. I tried to reach out to our sales team to make sure we had athletic greens to offer. So before I off, you say, mm. yes, we have athletic greens. Mm. I want to make sure we had some. I feel Sorry. like I did a very reasonable thing <laughs> of making sure we had something before I said yes. And then I was just railroaded in this chat for the next four hours of my Saturday. I'm you didn't just want laughing. to over, you didn't want to overpromise, Tom. Scott, yeah. is su- yeah. Scott's yeah. such yeah. an active listener. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's a good point, Tom. Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but yes i just had to bring that up um i do under it was saturday so i i do take a little bit of it back that that's fair saturday's a busy day but yeah we kind of we kind of went after tom after that (laughs) so are we getting him some greens or what i just took mine by the way i believe we're getting dakota's greens i gotta i gotta get dakota's new address i will get that and then i will try i will make sure we'll get happy ending of the story i'm glad perfect there we go um zach Yes. Well, D- Dakota, do you want to keep going with your list or do you want me to just rifle into mine? I'm going to tell you my next one because it has to do with Zach. Okay. It's kind of tough without Ian on this one, but Scott, you can attest because you played there too. Zach visited Chicago and yes. literally said it was the coolest city he's ever been to in the world. He's from New York. That was Dakota. Yeah. Great minds. Zach, it was I, 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 in 21. <laughs> I've been to Chicago, um, spent an off day there, went to Wrigley with a few guys to watch a game. It was awesome. Um, but, you know, this off day, I mean, it was great. It was so nice out. I had, I mean, had a lot of free time. Guys went on a boat. It was fun. And just, it was so nice. I mean, it was beautiful. Real quick, out. You, you can't just say a boat. Like, that's not a boat. Like, guys I don't know, like, really like nice... we rented a paddle boat and went on the river. Like, no. No, no, no. No, no the boys went on a nice boat. It was, it was, it was fun. It was good team bonding. Hasn't been a great run since the boat incident now the odell not, beckham little odell you know, you know I mean? yeah um but no i mean again it was beautiful out it was great weather for three to four days whatever it was went to obvious shirts said hi to those guys which was awesome and then again you know walked around wrigley a little bit it's just it's 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 awesome over you know there. you know how so much nice. i'm gonna wear that zs59 shirt once i get it oh I can't every wait. day i might sleep in it so i'm always so i'm always with him Shout hey, out Joe. Yeah. Fallon, uh, she just threw this at me. They gave us one too. Look at that. Oh, I like the per- I'm literally gonna wear it. All I like the, time. the period. I like the period at the end because there's just one. And any, just anyone like that has five me, nine period. If anyone asks me who it is, I'm gonna punch him. I'm gonna say, Yo, you never heard of him? He's a pio. Um, Scott, um, question to you. Ian yes. said that it's the greatest summer city in the entire world. Care to that is correct. Comment I that. was just gonna say that. Zach went in a great end of May, beginning of June is primo Chicago weather where yeah. it's probably it was yeah. like probably 75, not humid at all yet. You got the best of the best there. I want to ask you about the, so I've been meaning to ask you this and we talked about it a little bit, but I want to do it on a very public forum. I gave you a dinner recommendation. I'm not going to name the restaurant. I don't want it, you know, no free, free ads. ads, whatever. Yeah. How was my recommendation overall as a, dinner spot on your well, you didn't go on the off day you went on saturday no night. we went on saturday night yeah um so i mean i texted you and i said scott i'm gonna be honest with you man He's disappointed oh no the walk there was a little eh you know oh, you walk <laughs> zach doesn't like to walk zach no 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 no, 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 no. Your walk. <laughs> are you done Can sorry I, is sorry this, was this okay. my question sorry you guys sorry. there sorry sorry no like the area like it wasn't in I thought it was going to be a different area. We went in like a kind of like a barry, trendy like area, and it was just like I mean, it smelled like cigarettes and weed. It was just kind of like you know where we, I don't know, just Get you a couple Marlboros. Why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, tight, tight seating. I mean, it was like they were trying to get as many people as they could in there. Dark, but food was good, and I texted you that food was good. I do have, I would like to agree with you on that. I despise 
when places are dark because I literally I'm I will pull my flashlight out of my phone and use it because I'm like I can't read the menu. It's not it fancy wasn't, that no, I can't no, see. It wasn't. It, it, it was. I mean, it was fine. It was. It was. It was good. One um, to ten. One yeah, to ten. I, I, no, no, no. I think I was just expecting a little different. Um, I. But no, no. Well, did you look at the pictures on Yelp that I sent you? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think it was that small. I didn't think the square foot. It's would... not that. I don't think it's that. Oh, well, anyways, no. I'm Scott. You you messed up by sending it to him and not to Fallon because she would do more research and have like you think Zach probably is like yeah it looks fine no I no 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 that's you did wrong. research yeah I looked at a few places look at you I I I crossed well, I sent him I sent him a couple options and he chose that yes. one and I was very confident in it so yeah I just no like... I I I even Foles gave me a place I looked at um, yeah full yeah well so okay. Let's let's yeah, go out there restaurant up. talk. Last thing, no, last thing, Zach. Did you take Ian's recommendation for that night or no? The place he sent you, the like massage place. No, you didn't no. go there. No, Ian sent um, him a place, Scott, that just looked really fancy, and I was like, "This, this nah, is it would have been no, it would have been sick, but it was just such a place where I'm like, this is a place Ian would love, and Scott would probably love that place too." The mayor of Chicago sends you something, you don't go. Wow. Yeah, that's um, the guy. The guy of, I, I don't play eighty-one games there. You know, that's true. That's a good point. Um, speaking of foals, you just mentioned them. I think we should definitely chat about um, Zach's awesome article this week in the Athletic. Um, very great read for those of you who didn't see it. Covered <clears throat> Zach Short and Mr. Jason Foley, his teammate in Detroit, um, and also at Sacred Heart University, um, and they're you know, pretty, pretty remarkable journey to the big leagues. One, because obviously again, the big leagues is very hard, but two, knowing that the school they came from only produced one other big leaguer besides them. And now they're teammates in the big leagues together. Zach, what did you think of the article? Very, very cool. A lot of really cool pull quotes. Um, I'm sure your family has loved it. And, uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty sweet to read, even who, though, even who, though. Who wrote that article, by the way? Co- like, Cody where, like, Steven Hagen. He's our beat reporter for the athletic. For the Tigers? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if it was from the Pios or from John Boyer who wrote no, it. No, 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 no. It's not from the Pios. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, yeah, not a fluff but, piece from the Pios. No. But yeah, what'd you think of it, Zach? I mean, that's oh, sick. It it was awesome. And I wish like the the excerpt that Tom did a great job on um that was floating oh, around um, on our socials was it was like the main thing that I really wanted to talk about was I, I don't think that we really appreciate it or talk about it enough. Like between Jason and I, it's cliche, Jason. but like if, if you would, yeah, I don't know. I was like, like, have you ever called him Jason would, in your life? No, <laughs> if you would, it's like, if he calls me shorty, he can't do it. He won't do it. You know, like if again, it's cliche, but if, if you would have told us on move in day, like, Hey, you guys are going to play together in big leagues. I'd be like, yeah, okay, for sure. Um, but you know, it's, it's so wild playing against guys. Like you guys went to big schools, like all of these big schools that you play against. Like, I wish I'm going to send the picture to this group right now of where we practiced. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah. Like, you know, um, and for both of us kind of to just put your head down and kind of, you know, go to work, not really care to like. You're going and playing guys and because they certainly don't care where you practice. You know, if the no. game's at one o'clock, they don't care if you were in the gym. They don't care if you were playing on a great field, you know. So you, for us to kind of, I don't want to say persevere and fluff ourselves, but I mean, it. it's hard. It's hard to do. And just to not get caught up in that more than we did, it's great. And to be teammates along, you know, just playing in the big leagues in general, but like being teammates and you know, debuting the same year, it's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And we have a really good friend group. Like, we're still so close with a lot of our class, with all of our class. And it's cool because, I mean, you know, it's they, they tune into every game. It's two birds, one stone. You know, they're watching a game, and both of us could be playing. And, I mean, it, it, it really it, – it was cool. I wish people could really understand how far Foles has come as not only a pitcher, but – as an athlete, I mean, mentally, I mean, the guy would talk about, you know, getting a job on Wall Street, 
like he was like, oh, you know, like I can't wait just to, you know, have a real have a like a life, you know, live in the city. It's going to be great. And we're all like looking at him like, bro, you don't realize how good you are. And like still now, like I think he's getting a sense of it. But like, I don't think he really even read the article because he doesn't look at his numbers whatsoever. Doesn't want to look at his numbers, doesn't want to see anything. Um, And so I think he's starting to get an idea of how good he is right now and is going to be. And just to watch him the last, you know, eight years, nine years of our friendship and being teammates has been incredible. And he's one of the best relievers in baseball right now. Yeah. That's yeah, him and Lang like, are yeah, absolutely dude, lights out right it, now. It's like a two headed monster back there. And yeah, you know, it's watching, you know, for like we talked about in the episode, like Foles completely changed his arsenal. Like if he didn't do that, he would have, I don't want to say out of been out of baseball, but I mean he no. didn't have what he has now. And again, mentally the biggest thing watching him you know if he gives up a few runs like yeah he's pissed but he doesn't let it linger for more than one day you know and it shows what he's doing now he's an absolute pros pro you know I mean he's it's incredible and watching him every day for the last nine years like I said has been it's been a treat did you guys know each other before college or were you no just met there no no clue at Sacred Heart yeah and yeah again did you ever play against each other I mean he's from Long Island did he ever no. like no travel ball tournaments or anything? We guys- I played played a team um that was in his conference or something in basketball. We would put we would always play a team from Long Island in basketball. Um and we played a team down there, but not in baseball, no. I think my favorite part of that article, well, there's two parts that stood out. One was the game that I can't remember what scout it was or like whatever large game it was, but it said that you hit a homer and like a go ahead double. And then he threw a two, two hit shutout or something like that. And just like, just by itself, it's just like, Oh yeah, these guys were like very, very good in college, but still, you know, in their mind, like in your mind so far away because you were going to like a small school and had to, you know, had to grind. Yeah. I thought another, another cool quote was you saying like when you got to Mesa, like yeah. for rookie ball, they were like, Oh, this is the big leagues just because where we came from, you were just, you had almost like, more of a sense of gratefulness because like everything was kind of a step up from, from what you guys were going through at that time. Dude, so I thought that was kind of a cool 100%, appreciation. For where you were. Like if you were to see some of these fields that we practiced on, like, I mean, when I say town fields, it's like, if you're playing catch and you throw a ball over somebody's head, you have to wait for the cars to drive by and cross the street to grab the ball and bring it back. Like, it's not like, Crazy. It's literally in the middle. It has a fucking playground in the outfield, like with no fences <laughs> anywhere. Like, bro, it's so bad. And again, like, I'll never forget the first day I got to Mesa. You know how many there's six fields there. And I'm like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And even now, like, I'm, it, it pisses me off. Like, I'll get mad at like a spread that I don't like. And it's just like, bro, shut the fuck up. Who do you think you are? You know, like. And I hope I'll, I hope I never get to that point where it's like expecting one thing or another. Um, but again, yeah, dude, like you play guys who fly, you know, private to midweek games, basically, you know, you're playing an hour away. Like, yeah, we'll take the plane, you know, and yeah. it's a rude awakening when you're driving from Boise, Idaho, back to Eugene, Oregon with three guys in a two row yeah. seat, you know, like, yeah. It, it like I was sleeping on the floor of a bus. Like it's people don't understand. There's nine guys that play at a time, and you have a bus full of forty dudes. And it is, yeah, it is certainly a grind once you get to those lower levels. Yeah, um, you know, there's not many people in the stands um, at those games. There would be more people in the stands if they used SeatGeek. Yeah. Know? I'm very proud of myself for that one. Uh, Seeky, great sponsor. Um, use code Compound for twenty dollars off your first purchase at Seeky. You know, plenty of tickets out there, plenty of great concerts out there. Taylor Swift's going around the USA. Scotty, you know uh, what they say? Com- they say they, you know, they say on the app. They say green means good, red is bad. It's the easiest system in the world to figure it out. You see a green dot, especially like the, there's a spe- specific color of green. Like it gets greener as it gets get better. So if you see that, like, what, really is greener, green, what does greener mean? 
Well, it gets like a, it's like a, it's, it gets lighter from like a darker. darker shade of green to like a lighter shade of green. So like the lighter, the shade lighter of green, green, that that's how you know it's really good. So like Eagles colored green, no good, but like Seahawks, like lime. Yeah, green. I don't know if it gets now the Seahawk talking. level green, but it gets probably like a step. Maybe like that. Celtic green. Yeah. Thank you to SeatGeek for being a great sponsor. Again, use code compound for $20 off your first purchase. Go see a concert. Go see a show. Go see a ball game. Go see Zach Short play for the Detroit Tigers. Go see him in Philly tomorrow. Why not? Maybe towards the end of the year. Maybe towards the end of the year, you can get some uh, FCL Scott Efros. Yeah. Yeah. The FCL opening day was on Monday. It was... uh, it, it was it was great, you know. It was cool to have see like an after we played the Tigers. I don't think they did. I don't think we did very well. Um, you know, just the Tigers farm system just absolutely blushing, just loaded. But oh hey, long long season. Are you on, are you at home or on the road? We're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. You think Dakota has those blinds in his house? <laughs> what do you think? I'm eighty five. <laughs> um, speaking of which, all right. One of my topics was. One of my topics was related to that. Uh, Dakota, I think it's very selfish of you that you didn't offer up your room to uh, my Hoosiers or anybody else in the Lexington Regional that needed to stay 80 miles away. Um, did we see that story? Yeah, they literally were booked up in all of Lexington. So all the teams playing in their regional had to stay in like Louisville or in the dorm. Did you guys see? What, so it must have been a crazy. Were you in uh, Lexington this past weekend at home? Uh, no, we left Thursday for the road for a road trip. I was going to say, it sounded like the busiest weekend Lexington's ever had between the regional. And then there was like a big, like, so, uh, some say other concert sport tournament, or something? Yeah, a concert, like a volleyball tournament or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. It was mayhem. Remember when you had to go to the lobby of the volleyball tournament to the holiday of volleyball dads? Yes. That's a callback that to funny. an old episode where. I funny. literally was trying to, my roommate was sleeping and I tried to go to the lobby and there was 20 volleyball beds <laughs> getting hammered in the lobby. And I was like, I can't record. I cried on that episode. That was really funny. I cried laughing because oh, I was like, beds. did it get emotional? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just love when I wasn't um, there, you just got sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, we should definitely talk at least about the live PGA tour. Just briefly. Tom, it's crazy. Tom, Tom's pissed. Tom doesn't like it. Tom is a four aces guy. He's upset about it. I mean, it's Tom thoughts. It, it's madness. It's absolute madness. It is madness, but good for golf because people are talking about golf on a Tuesday. I think it's good that all the best players are playing together again, but Agreed. it's insane that all these guys turn down 400 million, a hundred million. And then also agreed. the leaders of the PGA are like, well, we'll take the money. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, the word is embarrassing. It's embarrassing what they just yeah, did. Yeah, Tom. They, Get Tom going. Year, Come on. They spent a year going, who would ever take that money? It's dirty money. We would never do that. We talk about loyalty to the PGA. This is a brand. This is something we've built for many, you know, hundreds of, you know, tens of decades has built the PGA. We're not going to sell out to the oil money. And then what do they do? They immediately sell out to the oil money as soon as they can. And, I mean, if you're one of those players who turned down the money – how pissed are you? How pissed are you if yeah. you're John Rahm and you turned down $200 million for Tiger? Seriously. I mean, Tiger doesn't need I, the money. Like, but... I think like even the younger guys who got like, I saw like Colin Morikawa got offered like a hundred some to go. And like, he's a very good pro. Obviously he'll be just fine. But like, you know, he's still really young. Anything could happen in his career. Like to take that money right away and to not get it. And then just, okay. Yeah. Come everybody come back. I wonder who uh, began, like, did anybody read who began these initiate like, uh, negotiations like was they don't even know the they, don't, they don't even know it came nobody out on even knows, right nobody even knows like it, yeah it's it, that's it'll be the worst part see how um it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out that's but the it worst part like uh is that no one knew the players woke up and found out right. on twitter and they're like how is this supposed to be a player-led league and yeah. you guys are just making these decisions and we find out on the internet Bonk. It was a good day for Twitter. It was very funny. Great. Um, oh, Joel Damon's the, tweet, friend of the pod. Great tweet. The comparison between the buyout of Michael Scott Paper Company from Dunder Mifflin between the Live and the PGA Tours were was excellent content. Spot on. I like that. What about Luis Arias hitting 399? I, I had oh, no, 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 two more hits tonight. He has that 401. <laughs> Jeez. He is so I it is incredibly impressive. 
I think it's, I don't he, think it's fair. I think he should be banned from baseball. He has more multi-hit games in his career than he does strikeouts. That's like what? It's like, Barry, it's like a Barry Bonds stat. Yeah. Like, you know, we we played him in uh, 2018 in Chattanooga. Really? really? Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't like a like. I don't think he was like a guy in their minor league system, like for the Twins. But I do remember him hitting well. But yeah, he's just been absolutely incredible. Did, like, where does he fall? So if the I saw like the argument of like MVP votes for him, like he's doing something that if he continues to hit 400, even around 400, like where does he fall in the spectrum of MVP votes at the end of the season? Like, because Acuna is also playing very well. Freddie Freeman not having a bad year. Where does the value? I know average is kind of an antiquated stat that's as far a, as being. Able that's to, a word. That is a that's word. That's a big word. Whoa! Yes, I'm not ready you. for that word. It's an outdated stat in a lot of people's minds, but it's still very valuable. The guy's getting on base, and he's helping them win. And they're playing a lot of close games. And they're winning ball games. So, where do you guys view him as for? Like, he'll definitely get MVP votes if he keeps this up, but. <laughs> Does the knock become where he's not driving the ball to the gap? His OPS isn't as high as other guys. Like, where's the rub there? I I, I see both sides, but 400 is a different beast. But if, if Acuna goes 40-40 or 30-40, I, I would have yeah. a hard time not voting for that guy. Four hundred. If he Shut finishes up. the year over 400, I don't know how you cannot. He needs like multiple awards. He needs something other than just silver slugger if he finishes the year over four hundred. It's almost like, like when uh, what was it two years ago when Vladdy was like a homer short of the triple crown yeah. or whatever, and and like they gave it to Shohei because like it's Shohei and he was outstanding that year on both sides of the ball. But like if Vladdy got the triple crown, it's like you have to you have to give it to Vladdy. Yeah, it's like if he hits four hundred, if he actually hits a four hundred or above this year, I think you have no choice because it's like. What? Was Ted, Will- Ted Williams was the last person to do it? <laughs> but that's what Zach, but Zach made a good point. 40 40 doesn't happen. Like, 40 40 doesn't happen either. I, I don't and know Freddie how many, Freeman's but it, all, Freddie Freeman's also hitting like 350 or something like that. Yeah, like but 340. Freddie Freeman, like, honestly, I think he's in the like the LeBron effect, the LeBron and yeah. Trout effect, where it's just like, oh, we he's hitting 340. It. No shit. Yeah. Just another year. It's crazy. Him. Yeah. Just like, another year. I, I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you know how many guys in the history of baseball have done 40 40? I just that's what, how many is it, Tom? I it's got to be like just, take everyone take a guess. What did I think the number? I'm gonna is. guess like eight. Is that too low? Three, Zach. I was gonna say six, four. Jeez, wow. so Jose Canseco 88, Barry Bonds 96, A Rod 98, and then sneaky guy on this list, one of my favorite players growing up. Alfonso Soriano, 06 with the wow. We just that- had this conversation too on the bus the other day. How did I forget this? I thought you were gonna say Barry Bonds did it like six times, to be honest. We literally just had this two weeks ago on the bus. 4040 is impressive. Well, and also, and we don't need to open another can of worms here, but only one of those four didn't take steroids. So but uh oh, let's boy. move on. <laughs> Dakota's going to open the can of worms and then well, I was just close those the first three, they all come out. Those first three names, I was like, Roids, Roids, Roids. And then Soriano, I was like, ooh, X Yankee. I love that. Soriano and Soriano. X Yankee <laughs> and Cub. Yeah, there you go. And yeah, yeah. You know who else is right. an X Yankee or a Cub and Yankee? Scott Efros, two great players. That's true. Yep. Um, also, last player to hit 400, 1941. Oh, See, that's double. what I'm saying. Like, like that is 80 years. Crazy. Okay, but Acuna, Acuna, he only has. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I I think you would give it to Acuna anyways. If, if right if now, he keeps I mean, playing at that pace, he only has 12 homers, but 26 bags, 32 RBIs. It. What if he doesn't? What yeah, if he doesn't get to, to see. What if he doesn't have 100 RBIs either? I don't know. If he gets to 40 homers, I bet he'll get to 100 RBIs. I know, but I'm saying he only has 12 right now. I know that's I he'd have to catch fire, he but I he's 12. Yeah, I think I, I see him hitting 30 with at least 40 bags. But then it's like, what if Arias is only like 390? Like, is yeah. that still yeah. good enough, or do you need the 400? I think, number? Yeah, I, think okay, yes. I think that's an attaboy. Uh, he's lead, he leads <laughs> Great the uh, MLB right now in OPS plus is at 161. Is that like a Arias does? Yeah. 
Yeah, like a nine fifty. So it's like it's not like he's like not you know. No, he. I mean, he leads the league at an OPS plus. I mean, that that means you're the best hitter. You know, statistically, right? Yeah, it, it's baseball. yeah. It's not like he's just like getting infield singles and you know, like choppers or whatever. He's still like driving the ball. I did see like his baseball savant page is very weird because it's got like some blue circles, but like some max red circles, and people yeah, are like, "Oh, this is like what kind of?" Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like his like exit velocity is like. 16 but his like whiff rate is like 100 like he just actually never swings and misses which is like who cares if you're like not hitting the ball hard you just don't swing and miss you're gonna get on more than you he's know. almost <laughs> the stat the multi-hit versus strikeout stat like it's not i don't want to compare him it's not fair to compare him but like it's almost like tony Gwynn. like if you strike him out yeah, it's like no, you, you did is, something there bro he is a modern day i don't i'm not taking anything away from tony Gwynn, but yes. i don't know the numbers i don't know but like if if Arise played 10, 15 years ago, he would be like the greatest player in baseball. 100%. It's just all about homers now. So it's not right. Know. He's doing this in an era where, I mean, guys are coming out of the pen, like your middle relievers throwing 99 with, you know, rise and sink. And I mean, this is insane. This is the yeah. strikeouts have never been higher in the game. And you're talking about a guy who's got 19 walks and 11 strikeouts. And 11 talking- strikeouts, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck oh that's insane that's it's so stupid. good it's stupid he's got more stri- walks than strikeouts in his major league career right now he's got 156 walks and 142 strikeouts stupid that's, uh, abs- that's absurd that is crazy uh i just wanted to give a shout out to josh donaldson he just came off the il and he's hit three home runs his last four names very impressive coming off the il long stint uh hit another bomb tonight um we fell short but very good to see. He's making great plays at third. Scotty, um, do you think do you think Clark Schmidt looks like Josh Donaldson? I was looking at Clark Schmidt tonight. And I was like, he kind of looks. I looked like he's like could be Josh Donaldson's like, Ill, like twenty year old son because I know either they can't be son because of age. But <laughs> I was like, this looks like uh, I mean, a younger version of Josh Donaldson to me. Maybe you caught them both on a shave night. Like maybe they're both freshly shaven. It was good lighting. I don't know. I I guess. I guess. Yeah. That's a no. All right. I, I, that that was, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. That was a respectful no. Off, yeah. That's fair. Off the top of my head, no. But like if I saw a side by side, I could be convinced. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it down, Tom. I could see it. Um, Clark Huxley pitched pretty well tonight. Zach, unfortunately, I have to bring it up because it was very cool. Liam Hendricks coming back to baseball. Got his win. Very cool. And a save. Uh, I did get a win. And he got the save tonight against my boys, but very cool moment. I did hear something very cool in the Yankee broadcast that my friend and former teammate and current teammate of Ian, Jameson Tyon, reached out to Liam Hendricks during his uh, cancer, you know, battle mm-hmm. and kind of just went through it because there are, you know, unfortunately a handful of guys in the big leagues who have gone through it. So very cool to see that's kind of a, you know, a tight knit community of, of guys that can kind of, you know, help each other get through it. So that was very cool to see him come back and get the, you know, the praise he deserved for, for battling that and coming through the other side. So it has nothing to do with Zach, I guess. Yeah. But, no, you know, it's just so very, sick yeah. to see, like he was diagnosed in, in like what, November, December. Yeah. And then less than six months later, I think it was like five months later, he's back in the big leagues. Like that's so like it is, insane. Yeah. Very Especially cool. With all the it's, treatment that you do and to get your body back in that competing form, it's insane. And he was yep. probably still trying to like throw while he was getting treatment and like stuff like that to try to like stick, get back as quick as he could. Like that's yeah. unbelievable. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and he's also a very exciting pitcher to watch when he's out there. So Zach, did you get a cheese stick in Philly yet? I did. I got one from the um, visiting side dugout or dugout clubhouse today. Oh, the guy in the dugout yesterday. Yesterday. Sorry. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to a place where, the Angelos. That's not you though. That's Foles. Foles mentioned it first. No, I think it was. T- I think it was Scott. Go no, no, Angelos. No, no. I, I, I will mention Angelos by name. I will stand by Angelos. It is spectacular. Yep. Spectacular. You will enjoy it. But the thing is, I'm not like a huge cheesesteak guy. But they're good. They're good. I'm not either. You I, just get I, them when you're in Philly. Yeah. You just get them when you're in Philly. That's the thing. Just, you lived in yeah. Philly, right? You'd get sick of them, maybe, but. If you're like, there once a year, like if I go to New York, I'm getting a New York slice. It's just that simple. Yeah, you right. Know? It's just all good. Have to. Yep, I agree. Scott, Scott didn't uh, yes, didn't Tom have something he wanted to tell us before this next uh, topic yet? 
Yeah, Tom? Tom. Yeah, if you guys haven't heard, the leaders in below waist grooming are traveling north of your South Pole with their revolutionary Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Plus, they've now launched the new, brand new, in fact, Weed Whacker 2.0. Manscaped has your brand new nose and ear hair trimmer. Time to upgrade your toolbox by going to Manscaped and using our code COMPOUND for 20% off plus free shipping. The kit starts with the Beer Hedger, a waterproof cordless trimmer that has a rotary wheel to give you 20 cutting lengths. Dakota, I know you love the cutting lengths. The Pro Kit also comes with the Beard Shampoo and Conditioner, the Beard Oil, the Beard Balm, all the things you need. Try out Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for all full body grooming needs. The Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 as well and all other below-the-waist grooming products. A lot of great stuff going on at Manscaped. A lot of 4.0s, a lot of 2.0s. They got it all. So to get 20% off and free shipping with our code COMPOUND at manscaped.com, always use the right tools for the job, and that's Manscaped. 20% off and free shipping with our code Compound at manscaped.com today. It is a fantastic beard trimmer. I love it. I was half expecting Tom to say back to you guys in the studio after that. <laughs> I can, if you like, he's, he's our best ad reader. He is. He is fantastic. I like when he cuts out sometimes in the episode and reads the ad, like when it's just him, he's like, Hey guys, it's Tom here to remind you about, you know, manscaped. Very, very well done. We should talk to Grom first. Yeah, that stinks. I'll say was, it, it stinks. Yeah, and it's tough. Like you see, like, I don't know if you guys saw his press conference, like he was getting emotional and like, that's got to suck. Like, you know, like he's, he's had some injuries the past couple of years. Like that has to be, and you know, Scott, like you're going through rehab right now. Like it sucks knowing that for the next year, he's going to have to work his way back again to get back to who he was. Yeah. It's uh, it's unfortunate. I mean, um, it goes without saying he is certainly one of the best, you know, players in this game. And whenever he's off the field, it does feel like the team's missing something. And, you know, Texas has been great so far this year, but imagine what they've been able to do with him. And, you know, um, it's, uh, it stinks and, you know, wish him the best in his rehab process. But, um, you know, it, it just didn't seem like he, uh, you know, yeah, like you said in the press conference, it didn't seem like uh, it was. <laughs> I wonder if uh, speculating, but I wonder like if he tried to rehab it and then it happened, or you know, um, if he'd been feeling it for a long time, or if it was kind of just inevitable. But you know, it stinks in mm-hmm. any regard. We saw him throwing the other day, like in the outfield. Um, yeah. And I mean, whenever you think someone's throwing, you know, he's getting to a decent amount. Uh, I don't know how far he's getting out, but. I mean, it looked like, I mean, I mean, I said something I was like, holy shit, that ball comes out of his hand. Nice. You know, like this is the first time I've seen him in person. Um, it sucks, especially with, I mean, that talent is just absolutely. He, yeah. Insane. He's one of the top five starting or top three starting pitchers the last 10 years. Like when he's healthy, he's literally the best starting pitcher in baseball when he's fully yeah. healthy. And it's like not close. No, it's not fair. I was looking at, I mean, can we just talk for a moment about his 2021? I know it got cut short to do yeah. in 2021. He got, he received nine. He finished ninth in the Cy Young voting, despite only pitching in 15 games because he was seven and two with a 1.08 ERA, 15 games, one complete game, 15 starts, one complete game, 92 innings in a 92 innings. This is some high school shit. He struck out 146 batters in 92 major league innings. Jeez. Uh, he also, by the way, that year, just for good measure, because the last time he'll probably ever get to do this, he hit 364 at the plate and had a 109 OPS plus. And that's not considering the fact that he's a pitcher. That means compared to all major league hitters, he was 9% better than the average major league hitter that season. It was only 33 at bats, but still, that might if he'd gotten to finish that season, it might have been the greatest season we've ever seen from a yeah. player. Ian talked about on this very podcast, a start in which he struck out eight of the nine first batters he faced against the Cubs and then had to leave because of an injury. So that's, it's unfortunate that the injuries have really become a storyline here in the back half of his career, but he's a, he's a guy that if he doesn't ever pitch again, which obviously this is his second TJ. Now you always get a little bit nervous. Hopefully he's able to make a full return, but he'd be a very interesting hall of fame case because he's has such a high, high peak, but it is a, it's not a sustained body of work. He'd be a very interesting guy. Hopefully, though, 
if he's able to come out and maybe pitch a few more years. We were talking about staying in the office. Imagine him coming out next year, maybe if he comes back in September as a bullpen guy. Can you imagine yeah. while I'm out of the bullpen? He's going wild five. It would, I, I, we were all very excited about the possibility of him. If they're in the in a pennant race down the stretch, you get to Grom coming out for the ninth inning. That'd be incredible. We, I, I would love to. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking about that too. His Hall of Fame case, and yeah, it his career has been so. You know, the story has been injuries, but he's been so freaking good. Like he's, you know, we talked about it with it arise, but it's just like how do you deny you know someone who with the highest of highs. And the other thing is, to be fair to him, a lot of people say the injuries, I think it's really only been since 2020 that the injuries have affected him. You look back, he had a stretch from 17 to 20, uh, 2019, where he threw 201, 217 with a uh, hundred, well, the 1.70 ERA that year and 204 innings. So, I mean, this yeah. is a guy that, you know, was able to go out there for the first really six years of his career and give you almost 200 innings a, a season. It's really been the last three to four years where, unfortunately, the injuries have started to rack up. But truly, one of the best pitchers I've ever seen when he was going. When he, you never faced him, have you, Zach? No. Probably, probably for you're probably not too upset about that. Uh, yeah, I get to earn those eight Bs against Jacob Degrom. (laughs) I mean, it'd be cool to say you faced him, but I don't. I don't think you're hard pressed, or I don't think you really want to go out there and be like, "Oh, I want to face Degrom today." Yeah. 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 And he, um, you know, opportunity. He's got, I think, five years on his deal, maybe six. Uh, option for six. You know, he's going to have this in his first year of his deal. I he's saw like somewhere 34. where, he might, yeah, I saw somewhere like where he might old. be able to do the internal brace, which might speed up the recovery process. I don't know. Um, you know, so uh, at some point he will return, and you know, we hope. You know, you didn't do that, did you, Scott? I did not. No. Is that more of a hope. second TJ thing that people do? I don't know. It it depends. It de- I Can think you explain it what common. that is to our listeners? Uh, I really can't. But the internal brace is a newer is is a newer form of the Tommy John surgery, where the, I think the ligament is still, relatively speaking, intact to where they can still use it, and they they basically use a internal brace system to strengthen that ligament versus doing. It the tr- more traditional um, Tommy John where they do the reconstruction and use a graft from your Palmaris. Um, it does shorten it a little bit. I've heard I, it, it is newer and it, you know, it has had success. So I don't, it, to answer your question about the second Tommy John, I've heard guys who do get it on their second go around, but I, it, it depends completely on what his MRI said and like how the tear was. So, yeah. And like what, what else goes along with that? But uh, yeah. Yeah hope the best with his surgery and his recovery. I think, um, I think we all healthy. want a speedy recovery because he is very fun to watch when he's healthy. Yeah, And I think, it. and I th- honestly think I, I like, I see guys, you know, it's unfortunate, but I see guys going down right now and going through it myself. I, I feel for every single one of them, you know, not that they did it in the past, but you know, you kind of have more of a personal connection after going through it. And, you know, it does suck. It gets it gets better, especially once you get the surgery and get that out of the way. I think that's the worst part is waiting for the waiting for the surgery. But once you get that and start your rehab, you know, you have things to look forward to, benchmarks to look forward to. But um, yeah, like we said, hoping for the best with him. Tom, do we have an Ian uh, update at all? They're Ian, down okay. six four now. He's yeah, he struck out of the fifth. So I, that that was the reason I didn't give the update because it was a oh, strike. Ni- nice, well, Scott. I'm sorry. Well, you know what he did wear to the plate tonight in his at bats. He did get a walk when he walked, he took off his nice Bruce bolt batting gloves, uh, which is also a great sponsor of our show here at the compound, our show, not Ian's show, our show. Um, <laughs> Correct. Quick quiz, name a player that wears Bruce bolt uh, batting gloves. Harrison Bader. Gloves. Ready? Go. Okay. Zach. Ian Hap. Okay, Tom, I got a sneaky one that I saw this weekend for the first time. I literally took the only two I know. So Brandon, the only two. Brandon Nimmo. Nim- Nimmo's another one. I saw G1 Bay for the Pirates wearing a Ooh. sweet pair of black and gold, you know, black and gold uh, Pirates colors. Scott. Lars Nupar. Nupar. Nice. Scott, Scott, you know who else? Who else? Ronnie Dawson, Ohio State Buckeye. Ooh, Ronnie. And Lexington Counterclock. That is Ronnie Dawson excellent. hit three had three straight games of with a home run the last three days with well, he can Bruce Bolt batting gloves with 
Bruce Bolt. They're beautiful leather. I've seen Ian wear them. Um, they're excellent quality, really sleek design. He actually gave me a sweet arm sleeve from them last year. The arm sleeve is great. Yeah. Ian sent me one. Mine's a, it's at home. I can't wait to try it. Oh, like my microphone. Um, so perfect. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Go get a pair of Bruce Bolt batting gloves. Try try promo code Ian Happ at checkout. See what happens. Try Scott. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. It'll... Uh, does anybody have anything about football? I just wrote football down. I don't remember why. <laughs> Zach I don't know if Scott is going to get the return of guest host. This might be a one-time guest host. Zach just this shook is great. his head. The fans are going to love just, this. Zach was in disgust at that. <laughs> well, I was just – OTA started. Very exciting time of year. A lot of hope in the air. Um, the Bucks Stadium and practice facility is right next to our complex. Um, and you see him practicing sometimes running out there. So, very Whoa. exciting time for football fans. I saw A.J. Brown and uh, Jalen Hurts oh. take PP today. How large is AJ Brown? Bro. Is he a real human? It's an action figure. He can swing he it too. Looks can like he? an action figure. Yeah, he I think he was drafted or played ba- like seriously played baseball. That's incredible. Jalen Hurts was playing catch and literally like he would get grab the ball and he'd be like like he was throwing right to his ear. Literally like a football. He also though, AJ Brown he- said like he could have played baseball in the MLB, and I think it was like Jason Kelsey was like, no, you couldn't. Like, you you don't realize how good these pitchers are. Like, you you couldn't do it now. And he's like, I'm telling you, man, I could hit in the big leagues. We were we were saying we were like, put him in the outfield because he's not scared of a collision. He's gonna catch every single ball. He's gonna run through. You're gonna run through the wall. That's what I'm saying. So like, anything that's out there, it's a catch. I mean, he, yeah. he wasn't. He was a 19th round draft pick of the Padres. It isn't like he was wow. some, you know, some complete bum. And he was a, you know, perfect game. Had him ranked the ninth best player in the state of Mississippi, the best outfielder, Damn. top 500 prospect in the country. So, I mean, this is a guy that well, how, you know, obviously he probably picked the right sport for him. It seems like it's worked out. But I think he it's worked fine out if he had if he had played baseball. He's when rich. was his high school class? When would when would he he been drafted? Uh, or when 20, did he get drafted? He got drafted in 2016. 16. What? You know who else? You know who was drafted wow, before him in 2016? Seventeenth rounder Zach Short. Ever heard of him? And Dakota. That's right. Ninth round Dakota. Mackey. Tenth round. Tenth round. Have, come on. Know your friends. <laughs> Ninth round is dunk, right? Zach's yeah, moved on from me. He's Ninth got Foles dunk. out. Foles is his new tall friend. I'm no longer there. It's fine. I get it, man. You've moved on. It's cool. You're back with Jason. Oh, Jason. Your friend Jason. Jason was a weird call. That was so yeah, strange. I I almost puked when you said Jason. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be like if you called me anything other than, I feel like you only ever call me Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. I I call you shorty sometimes (laughs) and that even feels weird. I call when I'm talking about you, Zach, to other people, I call you shorty, but I never call you shorty. Yeah. I called Zach shorty, uh, one time this spring and he like did a legit double take. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. (laughs) Okay. That's um, that's how you know you're good friends with Zach when you don't call him shorty. No offense to the people that call him shorty, but I agree. Should we I hit went slow? New spi- oh, well, I went no, new spi- Scott, we're not- <laughs> Scott, you're going off the rails. Scotty, okay, Scotty, 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 it's getting late. It's getting late. screen time. Slow screen time. Here we go. Leading mat, leading I manufacturer realize- in uh, flushing Sloan valves, uh, flush meters. Zach never goes to the bathroom unless it's with Sloan. Yeah, good thing that they have them here because I actually checked today when I was using the restroom and I was like, oh, thank God. How short was your game, here at the Zach? Too. Bro, it was the quickest game in the world. Looking at your screen time, it was Bro. like an hour and a half. You're not on your phone like at the game time. Dude, and we didn't have BP today too, so I was just kind of sitting there. I'm like, ah. And then our game, I mean, we we lost one nothing. We had, I think there's six hits between both of us. Oh, we got to get to the times. Tom had a hell of a day. Uh, mine was 546. 439 over here in Philadelphia. Scotty? I realized I realized at like 8 or 9 o'clock today when I was hosting that we were going to do screen time after I just literally sat on my phone for like two hours earlier. 751. Oh, God. <laughs> I did FaceTime my dog and my wife, my dog yeah. a lot today. For What's seven hours? Account? What'd your dog say? Yeah. Uh, I like well, how you also mentioned your wife secondary to your dog in the FaceTime. Well, well I think hey, I even, talking to her, even, even Britt would agree yeah. with that, I think. Yeah, uh, it was, five, yeah. 528 for me. What a day for Tom. 
I'm proud of you, Tom. That's a hell of a day. is a huge day for me. Thank you to Scott Epcross, who replaces Ian, who always has like two hours and 12 minutes. So it's great. Scott, that is so just like consistent, like on your phone. (laughs) Like that is like legit two and a half hours straight. Like it's been, it's actually like a habit I've been trying to break and I just can't seem to break it. I get home from the field and I like, I I get home like What else are you going to do? I'm sorry. I, no, I've been re- I've been reading, and then I just pick up my phone for 20 minutes and then put it down. It's just like, oh, this is bad. So Dude. yeah, exactly. I was watching Zach's game on there while I had the uh, the Yankee game on the TV. You know, just checking in on the guys, um, checking Dakota's scores. I had some some hours, not hours, minutes spent on the Atlantic League website. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. That's uh, that's our episode. Um, I don't Scott, know if Ian's going to have you great. Back. I, I thought you did, you did a great, great job, Scott. Scott. You know, other was, other than when you tried to bring in Marvel and when you just wrote down football as a note. It, football. It kind of worked. We talked about AJ Brown, but football, you know, it's always a good topic. I figured we could talk football because Ian was Ian's gone. here. And he doesn't like football. So I also didn't mention the NBA finals and we completely blew over that. But that's that's neither here nor there. Wait, they're not uh, playing tonight, right? No. Tomorrow. 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 Good series. Like in that. Miami, Hemi Butler. Hemi. He's going to get going. Um, that's our episode, episode 162. Yeah. Presented by Parse Rum. Rum. Um, again, Zach, should have sent me a bottle. I'll try to find my own. Thank you to the compound for letting me guest host. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> that's got to stay. That's got to stay. Yeah.